Haha, <laughs> sorry about that, my mic was muted. Hello everyone and welcome back to Sliverstar Arcade and more the great Ace Attorney and it feels oh so good to be able to say that again. Hmm. Maybe I should check the last record and make sure everything actually worked before recording this. Be back in a second. Alright, yeah, it seems it seems to be fine. Audio sounds a little weird, but that could just be the headphones I'm wearing. Well, no, because the audio sounds fine when I watch other videos with these headphones. Well, I'm not, it's not like I'm using the greatest of equipment, right? Like, you know, like I watch people who have professional setups, of course. Their stuff is going to sound different in quality compared to mine, and like they record in soundproofed rooms, and well, I record in whatever the heck this and this is. Anyway, so in the last episode, uh, we I think we looked at the crime scene a bit, but we couldn't get close because of the police, and we met Soseki-san. Uh, Yeah, so Seki Natsume, 33. Yeah, that looks about right. Sasato's only 16? Huh. Uh, did we meet this guy in the last episode or the episode before? It might have been the episode before. Anyways, a scholar sent to the sent to Britain by the Japanese government to further his study of English. He's the defendant accused of attempted murder. So we've all- So, it turns out the reason he was arrested was because Herlock Sholmes once again returns and found out where he is. Uh, does his reaction to this change at all? Yes, yes, the symbol of a great empire is first rate lawyers. Which means, of course, you'll stand by my side, you'll defend me. Oh no, sorry, that wasn't why I was showing it to you. He's very expressive, and I like that. <laughs> Anyways, time for us to get moving. Visiting a cold, dark jail brings home the reality of crime and punishment. I always feel on edge here, but there are so many interesting books I wish I could borrow. So, looks like we have to go back to Briar Road. Hey! One sec, I need to go back to the old videos that I recorded a month ago to remember what voice I gave them. Ah yes, I remember. It was my very poor impression of a 1920s radio guy. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't on the tourist trail, I'm, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So, you've been to hold themselves then. What did you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. Doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow. Whatever happens, and the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh, the stone full there of rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That Makes it worse somehow. Hey, check this out. Inspector Gregson, can I show you this? Am I supposed to know what that is? I've never seen that insignia before. It's worn by the fence lawyers in the Empire of Japan as a symbol of their profession. In other words, it's a worthless trinket here in Great Britain. Oh, no, it's very important to me. 
It, it shows my spirit. An English gentleman keeps things like his spirit very much to himself, I'll have you know. Oh. Don't give up, Mr. Naruto. It's too late. He's crushed my spirit already. I actually really like Gregson. Scotland Yard. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I've read about it in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, man. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh, yes, doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes around and rouses all the laborers on his feet so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep, wraps on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself. Did it myself, going a bit of back a bit. I had no idea. But Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. And after that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see... 20 miles? That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's... That's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my... And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobby's are expected to investigate cases as well. And chase after criminals try, trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men healing over from time to time, I admit. I always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Miss Nawado. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. Oh, this music is so good. Like, I don't feel like this is the right voice for him, but it looks, he looks the part. Like, look, he's even got that little, like, notebook in his, in his hat that, like, the press people would wear. About the case. It happened that around five in the evening, two days ago, just there on that opening bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means we haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area. I happen to have it on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's yard policy to give lawyers defending suspects the odd bit of information they go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. The local map has been entered. A street map of the local area showing where the victim was found. Anyway, as far as we know, there's no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I, admit, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... 
It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am. The precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It... What? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah. It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses what now? Witnesses. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? The fellow and his wife, and the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from the Scotland Yard. Ah! A, a policeman! That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a bobby, catching them banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh. I've no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. The policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could, you, I could have warned me of that too. Oh, yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to suspect, to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The color is drained from his cheeks. Um, let's talk about tomorrow's trial first. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you- oh, whoops. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, um... Makes no difference to me, but I will say this. No London lawyer worth his salt would touch- would touch that case with a bark pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? There's no way to save that man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. S sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only person he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. Master criminals? The, the violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims. Only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsumi wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but he didn't kill her. He couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into. For what a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor, infra minor infraction, is it? No, there's gotta be more to it. For some reason, he's taking an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really gonna have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it. Mr. Sholmes. Oh. Who did you hear that name from?
Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsumi who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle. Ah. That man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting inco incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He, he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble. Ugh. Ever, s ever seen this before? No. Oh, yes, that's Rance Magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called great detectives make some mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any of Herlock Sholmes' tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us. Only to be fronted by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all of our criminals. I'm so glad I gave him this ridiculous voice. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. Well, I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Naruto, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean... Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. H Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly! Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsumi did blame Mr. Sholmes for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did! He really did! Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. <laughs> the trouble is... I have no idea of the man's address even. It's Baker Street! Uh, how do you know that? So how- okay, so how- alright, yeah. It's in the stories, of course! 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We better try to find our our way there before Susosan gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I'll summon a carriage. So we're going to have a reunion already with the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. See, she nodded. In response to our thoughts, she's a mind reader. Angela. Is there anything else for us to examine? Anything new at all? Oh, that being a bike's probably going to be important. Oh, it probably belongs to the Bobby that uh, we're going to meet. If I had to wager a guess. Alright. 
right? A new location has been added. Thank you. Can we really visit, do you think? Oh, pinch me. I, I, I'm sure I must be dreaming. 221 Baker Street, the home and office of the most famous detective in the world. Ah, shoot. What, even, what voice I even give him? Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Shows. Well, one, the animation quality tanked since last time. Two, very beautiful house. Three. Wow. This, uh, this is actually really good. So much detail, like. Oh, that reminds me, I, I still haven't gone around the remat. Sherlock Holmes book that I have sitting on my weird shelf above my bed. I really should get around to that. 19th of February, 12.43 p.m. Sholmes Suite. So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. Oh, there's the violin. Is it as described in the stories, Mrs. So Mrs. Soto? Oh no, here we go. She's gonna freak out. S stunned to silence. Um, Mrs. Soto son? Aww. Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I, I suppose they must have been, yes read the stories, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down into an, down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it, the romanticism. Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Naruto? Just looking at her makes me happy to see someone so full of life and enjoying themselves. Ah, she's adorable. Oh, I... I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind... I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, don't mind me. <laughs> she's obsessed. But she's so respectful about it. She's not touching anything. She just wants to soak it all in. Oh man, why am I getting like such like such warm and fuzzy feeling? Well, looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do we have visitors? Hello? Is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Um, hello? What? Oh, didn't I give her, like, V's voice? Wait. Aren't you... Oh! How rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. That is just a high-pitched girly voice. Sure. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mrs. Soda, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case. The the King of Bohemia? King William Gorsius Sig Summon von Ortsman, of course. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. 
Forget the adventures of Herlock Sholmes for a moment and look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Oh no, this is giving me some... A mix of... Trucy, that one pink-haired lady from Case 2, and Trey Bien, all, like, all mixed together vibes, like, I know she's probably on her side and friendly, but we've seen the kind of devices she carries around. <laughs> the tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. It's just, ah, it's you! Just And just, like, after all the craziness and, like, after all the great music we hear, just to hear something like this all of a sudden. I knew it. Sodasan recognizes her too. Or recognize. Yeah. Ah, there you are. And taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh. Good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGill's trial in the defendant's entache chamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to go straight to work when you've only just arrived in London. Oh, yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, um, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designated to ele elevate fatigue, you see. And you must be exhausted after your long voyage here. And you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend the Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Um... Did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by chance? Oh, you know Hur Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mr. Sholmes to you, surely? Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point. Why is she here, Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me, I haven't introduced myself, have I? Oh, a nice curtsy. It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. I live here together with Hurley. Does that mean she now has a profile? Yes, she does. Iris Wilson, 10. An extraordinary young girl who lives with Mr. Sholmes. She has a degree in medicine and is the author of a popular series of short stories. A degree in medicine at the age of 10. I see the Ace Attorney trope of having increasingly young prodigies hasn't gone away. Like, I thought Sasoasan being a judicial assistant at 16 was young, but I guess Von... I guess... Von Karma, the other... No, like Francisca, I guess she became a she she became a lawyer at 13, I think. Which does mean that the Wilson that died in the first trial probably was probably was Mr. Holmes' great friend and probably this girl's father or grandfather. She's the one who writes the stories. 
I live together with Hurley. Ah, oh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait, this... This can't be. Did... Did you... Did you say that your... Your name is... Wilson? What's the matter with the soda son? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, I'm... Oh, um, I'm Ryonosuke Nahudo, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Naruto's judicial assistant, the Susan Mikotoba. It's a, it's wonderful to meet you. Lovely, Susie and Runo. Got it. Susie and Runo. There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her. I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. Stop reading my mind. Well then. I'd like to examine this. Calabash Road. Mirstium Street. Briar Road. Hmm. Oh wait, that's actually a really nice detail. That like, cause you can kind of see it zoomed out, maybe not on your guys' screen, but like on a big TV, you can kind of see like the sketch marks, but when you zoom in, it becomes more apparent that like, they don't fill in all the way. Like, so like this was actually that, but on like the printed stuff that was probably on a print and press, it's nice and clean, but it's like hand-drawn stuff. Like, that is some real, real nice detail. Even the dirt, like, shows up prevalent, prevalently. Like, look, even that one speck, oops, uh, that one speck there that's, like, right next to the magnifying glass, if you go over it with the magnifying glass, it becomes more apparent. So, like, that's not just a misplaced pixel, or maybe it is, but... I love this. Anyways. Look at this badge. Iris, can I show you this? Oh, how exciting! What is it? Tell me about it! Oh, actually, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something about it, if anything comes to mind. Why would it? Well, no, I suppose it wouldn't. Tell me, tell me, I want to hear everything. This hasn't gone according to plan. Alright, uh, well, let's ask Iris our questions. And then that'll probably be it for the episode. Iris, it was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the old Bailey? Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh, no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though, at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this? Well ah, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh, yes, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Jeannie? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. You're referring to that trial-disrupting gun-like contraption? Exactly! So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm, perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct me mechanism into my inventions. Ah, the Doofenshmirtz method. This girl's dangerous. Anyway, I brought Jeannie back here after that, so she could apologize to my tr trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock. Herlock Sholmes. We live here together. 
I, I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well, then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found out, found out that lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your roommates? I hope you don't mean to ask it, Iris, but how old are you? Ten at least this year. Ten at last this year. Well, what if your mother and father? Oh, no. They're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Wilson. Oh, yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of the adventures of Her Herlock Sholmes and... Oh, you have a copy of Rats Magazine. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Curly is always solving such amazing cases, you see. And he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard of them, don't you think? I love that she has... She mimics... Herlock and just does the, uh, like, point thing that he does with his cap. I, I love that. Goodness. Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he just solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you, you are the author. Yes. I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to call the, this latest adventure the Speckled Band. Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Sholm's first thought as well, actually. Yes! And of course, I know that snake might not be might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but it's a story. Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think. Don't you? So, do you mean to say are the stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in the Rats magazine all written by me? Yes, on my wonderful and very modern typewriter. But. But all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson. So the son's getting more and more worked up. John H. Wilson, yep, that's the guy who died. Wait, why wasn't... Wait, so the son was a part of that. Why wasn't she devastated? And why aren't we recognizing that? Ah, uh, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But, but what about the Doctor of Medicine part? That's all true too! I am a Doctor of Medicine! Oh, at 10 years old? At 10 years old! Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... Oh no, don't cry. Doctor Wilson is an English gentleman! Ah, yes! I did alter the sentence slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow? I suppose it does, yes. Poor Sosoda-san. She looks like her world, whole world has just fallen apart. Are we not going to bring up the fact that we've met the real John H. Wilson? And he was killed 
practically right before our very eyes. We handled his murder trial. No, no one, only me. Cool. Um, about before. Yes, yes? What's, what's on your mind, Runo? Tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow? How did you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted, although there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Ooh. Iris Wilson is proud to present her logic and reason spectacular. Whoa. First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the Defendant's Entaché Chamber. But you also said that we only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I had observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So, I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that... You accepted a case against that pati particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. Uh, the Reaper of the Bailey. I walked right into that one, didn't I? What's on Sasoda-san's hand? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you, earlier today? Ah! They use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I... I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGillid, the two of you had already caused to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face. So I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. How could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It obviously amused him. He told me that he caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Miss, Mr. Natsume. Now, Ryono has, a, has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. Okay, but that doesn't uh, explain how you knew the case was tomorrow. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says that the man's trial will be tomorrow. God damn it. Walked right into that one. Hurley is always stabbing his notes with a knife. You know, he is silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. It's like a kid giving a presentation. Yet still somehow better than Sholmes. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You even managed to search in something of Mr. Sholm's delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. 
This is really very good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please? Fine, we'll do this, and then I'm off to bed. Man, I used to be able to record for hours. Now I'm an old man who records for a few... Oh, it records for <sighs> one or two hours, and then it's nighty night. Case of the Japanese man. So yesterday, Mr. Sholmes apprehended a Japanese man. You were saying? Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage, but the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently, a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man. Mr. Natsumi... Mr. Natsumi, beyond any doubt. Sasuke-san said they didn't see anybody else on the street at all. It seems there were witnesses after all. Hurley used his great deductive powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police. And what did they find? A short, shifty looking, stooped man shivering in fear. Oof, Mr. Sholmes' great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did! He's a great detective! Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely! We have no time to investigate properly! Hurley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear. I didn't realize the situation was so dire. Jesus, like Jersey. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's terrible. I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I I suppose it is, but in that case, I don't hold out. I don't hold out much hope for Suseki son. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Um, you're most welcome. I have had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you've guessed, we'd like to ask him some question. Well, what was that? Some questions about this case as well. Ah, well, I expect Hurley is still investigating the scene. Of the, of the case involving Mr. Natsumi, you mean? Yes, Mr. Natsume. Hurley said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Oh, goody. In that case... Give Gregsy this from me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Iris's postcard. A card for Inspector Gregson with a message on the back from Iris. Iris's postcard is managed in the court record. It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make it the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try.
Good luck then. I'm going to return to write my manuscript, The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea, so come back soon. Back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Mr. Narvado, it's back to the scene of the crime. So, somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all. We head back to the scene with Iris' curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in my hand. To be continued. I am so glad I played for those last few minutes. Like, how perfect of a timing could I have picked? Um, I don't understand why you're not supposed to save in an act of LP. But, over on this channel, we do it anyways. Actually, that reminds me, Lucagen has just recently uh, started another Ace Attorney Let's Play, which you should go watch, because she is funny, funnier than me, and does voices better than me, and is way more immature, despite being probably, definitely, most certainly twice my age. Is she? No, she has to be. She 100% has to be twice my age. At least. Hmm. Anyways, so. No, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. No, 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 no. Uh... Yeah, so sorry about that. We're we're in it here. Uh, so uh, shoot. So yeah. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching, and. Yeah, I hope you'll continue watching. Anyways, as always, stay safe, have fun, and have a great day.